Let's pre party. Okay, 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 okay. We're back. We're back. We're back live. But we're in live. a different stream. I, I hope uh, people see it. I hope people see that we are back, but in a different stream. Okay. Uh, we're live. You can proceed and talk about how and why you started creating content. Please, please. Okay, okay. So I grew up, couldn't travel. We were broke immigrants in the States. I wanted to travel so badly. We couldn't physically travel. I had no money. And then I started learning languages. And so when I started learning French, learning Italian and same thing happened there. So I, by the time I was in high school, so I was around 16 years old, I was already speaking Portuguese, English, French, and Italian, and I couldn't travel because we were undocumented. We didn't have papers. Yeah. And then finally we got the papers when I was about to go to college and we were broke. I was broke, right? Like we didn't grow up taking vacations. We were always working, but I always wanted to travel. So finally, when I went to New York, I went to college for international business. Okay. I, I was so excited about traveling that I started taking little trips with a college buddy and we would film it. We would just take pictures and videos and make, because I'd never thought I could travel again. So making content was something that I did to, to basically save that memory because in my mind, I never would travel again. And then when I realized that if I made it into a, like a show, I okay. could actually start exchanging like I could ask somebody, hey, can I make a promotional video for you in exchange for a month of free Spanish class abroad? And it became then it started becoming something. So for the first two to three years, we didn't get paid a penny and we were just working our asses off and no one was paying us, but they were giving us things in exchange. Okay. So I'd get free hospital stays, I'd get free trips, but I wasn't making any money. I was actually just investing, investing time, investing energy, making content. And it wasn't okay. until I started, so we started in 2012. So I started making videos, making content in 2012. We became full-time in 2015. So it took me yeah. three mm -hmm. years of like working a lot for any kind of money to come in. And, and that's kind of how it happened because I was always broke. So I'm like, okay, how can I find a way to get around the world? And then it, it was really a fun game to see how strategic I could be, how, how many partners could I get? And then I started getting paid for it. And then since 2015, I haven't done, I haven't worked for anybody else. Like it's, I've been doing, I've been creating content full time for Ooh. a long time. Okay, 2015, that's a really long time. That's, that's like the, the beginning of when you could leave from YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like right in the beginning stages where, There was no influencer industry really, like maybe just Tyler Oakley and I Justine, okay. like it was very beginning stages. Like even Mr. So. Beast was starting, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, Mr. Beast. I, I think I think his channel has like 70 years or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're you're from really the really beginning. Okay, the real beginning. And that's really cool. Like you wanted to to travel to learn languages, right? You wanted to do cultural things <laughs> and the money was yeah. to do it okay that's that's really nice that's really nice uh and then you started you started with a, a partner right and then you yep. made your content and you hit a million a million subscribers and that's um, really like like a, a huge number <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you guys just hit 1,000 today. It's a big deal. Congratulations. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we hit on 1,000. Uh, if you didn't knew that, you can look down there. We, we get 1,000. We, like, we, <laughs> we, have like, we have like the word of the, at the side of the number that tells you that that is 1,000. <laughs> yeah. So exciting. So it's like, you know, what I love about creating content is that it's slow and steady. Like today you hit 1,000, right. you keep going, you're going to hit 2,000 in a far faster way. You're going to hit 5,000 a lot faster. And it's just, what I love about it is that if you're consistent, you can succeed. Obviously, you yes. need to make good things, but it's a test. Like every time you guys do a live stream, you get a little better because you learn a little bit more. 
because you're making a little bit more mistakes and you solve the problems. So that's kind of what I loved about that journey of creating content and reaching 1 million. Yeah. There was the part that I loved about the technical side. I'm really learning. I'm hands on. I'm like doing things every day actively, not only behind the computers, but like in front of the camera and I'm climbing volcanoes and I'm riding <laughs> horses. I'm living a life, right? I'm very yeah. like alive. But then the other part of it that's amazing is that you get, you get this audience around the world and you're just like, holy shit, people care enough about me to spend time of their life watching a stranger and then they start supporting you. And then little by little that family grows until one day you wake up and you're like, one million people? Yeah. <laughs> and that's how it goes. Dude, that, that's like, that's insane. That's like a dream, you know, that's living the dream, basically. Yeah. Basically living the dream. <laughs> yeah, it's living the dream with a lot of nightmares along the way. That's the other side of it that people okay. don't talk about much. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to get into the downsides or the just the good sides? Okay, we need to talk about the downsides, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You want to talk about it now? <laughs> yeah, we can talk okay, about it now. Okay, so, okay. So. For, yeah, 2015 until 2019. So four very extreme years. I started in 2012, so I was doing this, but I wasn't getting paid for it. So from 2012 until 2019, I was working full time okay whether financially or not like the first three years we weren't making any money but we were making three videos a day posting content on twitter and instagram just like doing everything obviously in 2015 we started making money from it but i did the entire career for seven years my life revolved around what videos i was making that week and we were making videos in three languages every week so tuesdays was Whoa. english Friday was French Fridays, so totally in French, mm -hmm. and Sunday okay. was Domingão dos Brasileiros, so okay. in Portuguese. <laughs> and each video had three subtitles because we had a huge audience that spoke Portuguese, French, and English, so we needed to make sure every video was understandable to every like, audience. Uh, you guys made the subtitles or you paid someone to make it? So well, first we started doing it ourselves and then we started paying people to do it, but we would always have to correct it and make sure that it was uploaded. Yeah. Um, and it practiced, I, my French became because, and same with Portuguese, in a lot of ways I relearned Portuguese making videos on YouTube because you're making videos every week and you're watching your shitty language and you're editing yourself and you're like, boah, tudo errado, you know? <laughs> I started yeah. learning. So, uh beyond that it was a lot of sleepless nights a lot of pulling all-nighters editing i was editing two videos a week uh you know my old business partner we were we were both taking turns editing things we would film videos together we would film videos separately so i've been traveling around alone and i'll make full videos alone from start to finish a woman of color alone in the streets of wherever i am like in greece learning greek speaking to yeah. random locals filming yeah. myself you yeah. know like it takes some balls it takes courage to do that <laughs> uh and it's scary sometimes but it, it was a beautiful thing because i became i became who i am i grew up making content and making content matured me and it was super cool but then once we hit 1 million subscribers i was like well shit I want to do some other stuff with my life because then I just started zooming out and I had this moment of like, is this all that it will be? Like, is this it? This is just my life. I wake up on a Monday stressed out about what video is going to come out on Tuesday, stressed out about what video is going to come out on Friday and, and Sunday, you know? And so I decided I took a big scary leap and I was like, I'm, I want to dive into other things. I want to go on my own. I want to talk about other issues like financial literacy or like growing up as an immigrant or these more serious topics that I wasn't talking about on the channel with a million subscribers okay. because that channel was like, we're fun, we're traveling. And I love <laughs> that. Wow, my life is amazing. <laughs> like, oh my God, like I have no problems. The world is amazing. Yeah, and like, like the like, average hey. Instagram user. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically. Exactly. And I just wanted to like learn stuff and teach okay. stuff and just grow my brain and it didn't feel like i could do that on that channel so it was like a big scary decision because i knew i would have to kind of 
jump into the unknown of like yeah. what is Joe Franco all about by herself. And it just felt like the end of an era. Like when I started that channel, the goal was to hit 1 million subscribers. That was my goal. And then once we hit it, I was like, great, accomplish the goal. What's the next goal? Yeah. You know, just because you finish that project doesn't mean those videos disappear. They're always going to live online. Yeah. But I'm ready to like dive into something new, which is when I got cast on a Netflix show. So that yeah. was what was new. Yeah, and, 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 and the show is amazing. I've seen not all of it. <laughs> the second season, <laughs> I haven't seen all of it. Uh, I, I'm guilty of that. But uh, <laughs> I have seen uh, most part of it. And I think that the, the English name is, is weird. It's, it's, it's like really big. I don't know why. It's but, so okay. long. I know. <laughs> the world's most amazing vacation rentals. Cara, <laughs> aluga-se com paraíso é muito melhor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, wanted, I wanted to put in the the name of the 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 show in the like the Instagram post and, and stuff and it was so big it, it didn't fit in any way <laughs> i couldn't fit it in uh, and okay this can this can be uh this can be uh, got uh, uh, just let's just move on i said something that can be interpreted in and uh, 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 yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> we can take it out of context <laughs> yeah yeah amazing both of your english is amazing well oh, done thank you thank you thank i mean you. i haven't said a lot of words <laughs> so far but so, yeah you gotta jump in it's your turn yeah, yeah I, I, okay I, i'm gonna be silent by now i no, no 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 don't do this i i'm just waiting go ahead, go when ahead. when i when i when i feel like i i can jump into the the conversation i'll do it but i'm i need i need some time to prepare mentally you know Okay, well, whatever you need, I'm here. We got it. Please, <laughs> some we got it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then you did the show. How was it to do the show? To be a host of it, like, like one of the the, the, the three main characters because it is a reality show, you know. <laughs> But the, the three main persons of, of the show. How was it? That it was crazy. It was crazy. And you know, it's funny. I was thinking about how. So you have to audition for these things. You don't yeah. just get them. And the way that the auditions work, they, uh, they interview like hundreds of people around the world that do many different things. And from those hundreds, they decide on like maybe a hundred and then they do Skype calls with them. So you do two Skype interviews where you're interviewed intensely. And then if they like you, then they call you for the last round of auditions, which is called a chemistry test okay. where they put... 12 to 15 people, the most beautiful people you've ever seen in your life, in a room. And then two by two, they call you out of the room and they say, okay, we're going to say action. And you just met this person. You're going to have to speak until we yell cut. You're going to have to pretend like you have known this person for your whole life okay. and have chemistry with them. So this is like a true improv experience of being as yes. likable and as empathetic as, per as possible. <laughs> and so this was, this was how I booked, this is the job. Like this is how I got the job. It, it was that process. So after the two first interviews, a few other meetings, I went in for the chemistry test and they would put you with different men. So they always wanted a man and a woman. And then I ended up getting along with one of the women who were my competitors. She was a competition, okay. really. But we were just, I was like kicking it, hanging out, laughing, making jokes. And the producer saw it and they loved how we got along and they asked to put us together. And when both of her, like both of us went in for the audition together, it was like we were best friends our whole life. <laughs> and they, they didn't know what to do because they wanted a man and a woman. Yeah. And then they put us with Luis, who was the other guy that I got along with really well. And Megan also got along with him. And when it was all three of us, they realized like, oh shit, this is the show. And so when we got cast, they had to put a new role on the show for <laughs> all three. So all three of us could have it because it was only supposed to be a two person show. So it's a good lesson to always be very nice to people because you never know where it's going to take you. And also because it's just more fun that way. Um, so that's, that's how I got the show. And it was yeah. pretty crazy to think all of those years of me on the street by myself, making YouTube videos or with, you know, my old partner, like, knowing how to speak to somebody else to have that chemistry with somebody else how much i was in training for this netflix job because that netflix job was all of my training it was like exactly what i was training for without <laughs> knowing that it would be so when we started filming it was 
it was very hard because it was like six days a week of working straight. You're sleeping in a new bed every two nights. You're traveling around different time zones. You don't have much time to recover. You're having to study about the places you're going so you know what you're talking about when the cameras run. Okay. You're filming for 14 hours a day, 12 hours like, a day. And, and especially you, right? Because you needed to, to talk about the cultural side of the, the, the thing. Of like the exactly. other two needed to talk about the the rentals and and the, the places and you you needed to know about the 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 culture the, the religion I don't know the the all yeah, the, 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 the fact, tradition like, the facts <laughs> the context yeah like and I loved it and I remember telling the producers I was like wow this is my dream job I'm getting paid to learn okay I'm such a nerd I'm such a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm getting paid to learn about things I actually care about, like people and the area and what the travel scene has been and what this means for the future and sustainability and how can we travel in a more conscious way. Because, and this is the thing that I wanted to do after leaving the first venture of like 1 million subscribers on that YouTube channel. I was traveling around and we were never talking about the issues. We were never talking about like sustainability or the fact that you could travel and shit all over the earth and ruin the places that that you love okay we weren't talking about that and on the show i was able to do research and learn about different kinds of tourism ecotourism learning about like local tourism so you're staying in places where whatever money you spend goes to the locals instead of these big that's chains that's nice that's nice that that's... ruin the places <laughs> like like uh you Paying the locals your money instead of the, the big companies also provides you the like the native way to enjoy the place. Like uh, if if we're in Brazil, we wanted to take someone to some places. We we are not like Brazilian people don't go to the Pão de Açúcar every week. You know, every day. <laughs> we we I I I've, I've never been it. I don't no no no. I'm lying. I've been it to it one time and like. The the crystal I've been to nev never I've, been to it. <laughs> I've never been to crystal. I've been to Pão de Açúcar in a school trip one time in a yeah. school trip. I don't remember anything about it. I just went in a school trip and that's it. Yeah, and, and <laughs> like if we wanted to to get uh, some gringos here to do something, <laughs> it is that that's fun. That's something we do. We will always uh, like get him, get them into a local place into a local uh, uh, restaurant like yeah. something like that and, and that's that's really cool that's really nice we just go to yeah. a podrum yeah yeah you you want to to experience the real hot dog in brazil with like everything that you can fit into it <laughs> i miss it i want it i'm going i'm going i'm going for christmas bought a lot, oh, bought a lot. okay okay nice but yeah so it's this and Part of the reason I love learning languages is because when you speak the language, you immediately show respect to the locals and the locals will want to take you into the local places. Yeah. So my experience traveling the world is much different than somebody who doesn't speak a bunch of languages or doesn't try to, because when you speak, like if I'm going to France and I speak French, I will make French friends and they'll take me to the corners where they wouldn't take somebody that doesn't speak French, you know? Same thing with the talent, same thing with all the languages that I speak. And so to me, it's connected. It's like, I don't just like to travel. Actually, I like to travel inside the culture. And that means learning the language, learning the history, making friendships, falling in love, having relationships. Like it's a whole lifestyle. And that's my kind of travel. It's not like the travel vloggers kind of travel that they go okay. in, they take some good pictures. Yeah. And then they leave. Mm. That's really nice. That's really nice. Okay, and then you did the Netflix show and you visit some places. You have a favorite one? I'll tell you some favorites that I think about all the time. Finland. Okay. okay. Incredible. We went to the North Pole where Santa lives. It's a, <laughs> it's a city called Rovaniemi. And Santa <laughs> okay. lives there. And like when you send a letter to the North Pole, it goes there. Who knew? What? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> like like people here doesn't doesn't really send a letter to the North Pole, but I I, I like Americans said it right. <laughs> I mean, they they really do. 
there's so many tourists that go there just to like see Santa, and he speaks a bunch of languages. My man, my man. Uh, so yeah, like, Finland like is amazing. You can, you can actually see Santa. You can see Santa. Yeah. Santa lives there. <laughs> It's so. Crazy. I need to go there. <laughs> I know Rovaniemi in Finland, in Lapland. Okay. It's like the Arctic Circle. So yeah, Finland was amazing. I did this crazy thing I'll never forget. You go into a sauna, a steam sauna, and it was winter, so the the lakes are all frozen, covered in ice. Okay. And in Finnish culture, there's this thing called an avanto, which is a hole. They dig a hole in the lake that's frozen. Mm -hmm. So you, I went in the sauna. You get sweaty, and you're in a bathing suit, and then you you walk out of the sauna sweating, and you go right into the lake. Like there's a little tiny ladder. And you climb down, and your your whole body is in shock because you're in a frozen lake. Okay. And it's so cold that there's ice. All you see are like little ice crystals forming around you. And I stayed in there for three minutes. <gasps> and when I got out, and, I was and like, then you died. And then I'm like, and no, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> Dead, which is why I felt so alive after. It was a, it was magnificent, beautiful. Okay. Uh, so that was really cool. I love Finland. I really love Japan. Japan is super cool. Uh, do you guys want to go to Japan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, I mean, why? yes. Like, like <laughs> why not? We're, we're two weebos, you know. We yeah. need to go to Japan. <laughs> I, mean, I feel I'm... like yeah, that's that's the thing. I have so many people I know want to go to Japan. So we went to we went to Osaka. Amazing. Okay. Mm. Even McDonald's there is amazing. So instead of instead of bread on the buns, they do rice patties. So you're okay. eating like two huge rice patties with beef inside. Oh, it's so good. Okay, that, 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 that sounds like it's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all done with super heavy. Like you eat half like of it. Like it's rice, just... right? It, it, is... yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. Heavy. But thing, and it's just like a pound of food or a kilo, like a few kilograms. So, oh. or, yeah, it's heavy. It's not light. Uh, <laughs> Well, we went to this place called Yoshino, and it was a forest town. Okay. And that episode was talking about giving back to communities when you stay somewhere. So the whole house was made of cedar wood, and it was because the craft of cedar working, like cedar woodworking, was dying away. Because a lot of the young people who would naturally learn from their parents, they wanted to move to cities. So we stayed there, and we were, like, learning about how the community is coming together To revive this tradition of woodworking in Yoshino and in that episode like the town is spectacular we went into a temple that was from the 1300s okay. like 1300s <laughs> <laughs> we watched the sunrise with monks that were like, chanting like in Brazil we, we don't even got trees that are from the 1300s <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> And it's just like, okay. holy crap, like the amount of history is crazy. So yeah, Japan, and then I guess the third one, let me think here. Um, we didn't get, get to go many places after COVID. We went places, but it was in the States. Okay. But we were supposed to be traveling, and then the, the world shut down, and then we stopped production for four months. Okay. Like, only four months? Yeah, and then we went <laughs> back in July. Okay. So we... We started shooting January of, of last year and then of 2021. Okay. And then we finished. No, we. I'm sorry. We started shooting January of 2020 and then we yeah. finished January of 2021. Okay. With a four month break in between. Okay. That, that, like, that's not much time considering yeah, the that's pandemic. Less than I expected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So while everybody was quarantined, we were traveling. Got it. That we were with covid tests the, my nose is like violated from how many covid tests <laughs> yeah day. i imagine <laughs> i can't imagine it <laughs> no i i i wouldn't want to do that that that's not yeah. my thing that's not my thing like like one test a year was enough for me you know <laughs> All right yeah and then i guess the third place would be bali uh bali was okay. oh, so good and it reminded me of brazil It reminded me of Brazil because really? it's like, yeah, the hot, the heat, the people smiling, the people together, the, you know, outdoor living, like anything That's that nice. reminds me of Brazil makes yeah. me love it immediately. <laughs> okay. That's really nice. Like one of the, the first episodes, I think 
you guys went to a a rental that was on a desert with some some like mirrors at it, like a, a really long place, you know. And I thought, oh, hey, that oh, was season two. You so... did watch season two. Oh, I did watch season two. Okay, uh, and that was so sick. Like like it was uh, in the middle of the desert, and it was mm -hmm. like you couldn't see it. Uh, it was at such angles, invisible. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the visible house. Yeah, you couldn't see it, and and it it it, it didn't uh, impact on the the view of the desert that that it just sand, you know. But <laughs> it didn't impact Wait, on it. I'm not sure I understand how 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 do no. what do you mean with you couldn't see it? What do no, you mean with that? Like you know those skyscrapers that are mirrors, like uh -huh. in New York or in Sao Paulo, wherever. Yeah. So it was like a skyscraper like that on its side, all mirror. Mm. The entire thing was mirror. And because it was a mirror, oh. God, it was, and because it was all desert, it, you could not see the house. Like I see, it's I see. Day. In fact, I I wouldn't see actually, but yeah, I I I understand. Yeah. <laughs> see, when you make a joke in another language, is how you know you speak it well. <laughs> You're doing great, okay. killing it. Okay. Okay. okay and, and that was the one that I said, okay, this is so sick. Like, imagine you being at a place and it, you're, yeah. you're just like hidden. That, that's that, just like a, a super <laughs> villain hideout in, in plain sight, you know? Exactly that. With a huge pool inside, like yeah. a massive pool inside the, the house. Okay. Yeah, that like so many seems like, like a very, very interesting place, at least, you know? Yeah. I don't know if uh, you can, like, have fun in there i think yeah, I mean... no we swim in the pool and the entire house was wet like the entire thing was just wet and i was like oh that's it's like better to, it's prettier than it is functional okay mm. and some of those places were like that where you're just like i'm glad i'm not staying here for real just to <laughs> test it like i'm glad i'm there but like, like I, you can't use the what's pool. the functionality of staying at a, the middle of the desert yeah <laughs> Like in a, in a trip, like only if you wanted yeah, to well, stay in the middle of the desert, but why would why? you want that? Yeah. I love, I love a desert. You know, the sunsets, the best sunsets I've ever seen have been in the desert and this, the best sky. It's like outdoorsy. So if you go out in the desert, yeah, I mean, it's like for the people who like camping and stuff. Okay. Got it. Okay. That, that makes sense. It <laughs> makes sense. If you think of this angle. Okay. I mean, not, not, <laughs> not, not for me, you know, but. I can see why people would enjoy it. I would, I would Where go would there for like two hours, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I would see yeah. a cactus. What? Yeah. I... Um. Where do you want to go, both of you? Like, where are you gonna go first in your big adventures? If you have something in mind, like a, a trip. I haven't yeah. thought about that actually. Maybe Japan. Japan probably, is a probably Japan, but uh, yeah, Japan is a strong <laughs> contestant, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, probably I, Japan, probably. Yeah, Japan. I can only think of Japan right some, now. But some places on Europe, I, I I want to visit. Like Portugal seems like a a really nice place, but uh, mainly Japan. Mainly yeah. Japan. Okay, but then where would you go? Are you town All people Japan. or city people? Or nature I mean, people, I mean I this. ideally, I would like to have enough money so I can be in various places, not just one city, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I would like to see a lot of, of Japan, you know? I think yeah, city yeah. And, and, and a city and a town, you know? Like some... Yeah, like at, small, at least small that, place, you know? A, but like, I, it's, the thing is, there's a lot... That's, I, there is lots of cities in Japan that... Yeah that people talk and that's great tourism and stuff like that okay. and there's towns that people talk that's great tourism as okay. well so you know yeah 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 i what i learned on the show is that my favorite places to go are the second most popular cities and okay. then a nature town so like the main cities are always going to be super crowded super intense yeah. but then the second major city is going to be more local cheaper okay. more like space so i liked osaka that better than sense. tokyo and then <clears throat> always like nature like i need to see nature wherever i go and that's something that i didn't realize until i got older maybe because i'm just getting old <laughs> and i'm like people are stressful like give me some nature 
Like, I, I don't imagine Tokyo being much fun. I, I imagine, like, walking on the street and and s everybody looking at me with an ugly face, you know? Yeah. Like, like angry, I mean, to angry at me. Tokyo, I has, <laughs> Tokyo has a lot of places, you know? has a lot of touristic places, but it has a lot of people, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, a lot. it's overwhelming. Yes. It's just like, holy crap, how do I spend this time? Mm -hmm. The thing is, yes. like, when you travel for a week, you're stressed. You're stressed because you only have a week. So you're like, I need to see everything. What do I see? And it's overwhelming if you're in a place where there's like a mm. million things. To do. You know that there's a porcupine cafe in Tokyo? There's, there's a what? <laughs> porcupine cafe, like Sonic the Hedgehog, that oh, animal. Man. There's just a cafe filled with those. And I was so upset I couldn't like Like, a, like a, a cat one, but with a porcupine? Oh, sorry. But it's, it's hedgehog, not porcupine. There's ah, there. okay. Hedgehog. That's okay. Okay, okay, that's what I, I was like. Okay, that that one is a little cute. confused. That one is yeah, cute. Yeah, the, one, the, one. <laughs> the other one okay. isn't cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go to the Hedgehog Cafe. I was so bummed I couldn't go. Next time I go to Tokyo, oh. I'll go. Okay, that's like Hedgehog cat Cafe. Cafes. Yeah, it's, it's like a cat little cafe. different, you know. <laughs> but it it was <laughs> Hedgehog. Okay, but uh, Joe Gabriel's on the chat answered your question by himself and he said he wanted to have enough money to throw a dart on a map and go to that place <laughs> oh shit i did that but... once and that's cool <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't throw a dart i closed my eyes and i did this and then i stopped and it was in the ocean it was a it was in the mediterranean sea in between greece and turkey and, and i was in nairobi <laughs> i was in kenya and i was looking for a place to go like where do i go next i don't I don't have any idea. And then it was in between. And then I picked Greece and I fell in love with Greece and now I can't. I've never gone mm -hmm. to Turkey because I keep going back to Greece. I should have <laughs> gone to the middle of the ocean, but oh. Yeah, yeah I thought you were <laughs> going to the middle of the ocean, like nowhere. Like the, the place yeah. where they, they filmed, uh, I don't know the name of the movie in English, Tashu Like, Tashu I don't, I, 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 I don't know. What's I've the never name seen of it? that movie. The, the one where it brings burgers. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've never was, seen that movie. It's animated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cloudy like, with a chance of meatballs. Wait, like what? what? Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I think is the translation. Okay. What a it's bad like, name. Why? I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It's better than some adaptations I've seen because it's like. A, like it is an adaptation, a, right? Is the is the original name? Yeah, I know, but I, <laughs> yeah. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm saying because it's like a uh, weather forecast, you know? Like yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. cloudy with a chance of like, I, 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 I talked like about it, I like it, it because I talked about it because uh, the place where they are, I don't know if it exists, but it's at the, the bottom of the A on the Atlantic on a map, you know, it's a mini uh, island, God. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, next time I'll go there. That's okay. <laughs> They eat fish in there. Only fish. That's yeah. that's the that's the, the, the movie plot. <laughs> I mean I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Gabrielle uh, said on the chat, so you go to Crete. Um yes I did go to Crete. I did go to Crete uh this year. I loved it. Okay. There's something about Greece to me that it, it's also because it reminds me of Brazil. I swear, it reminds me of Brazil. <laughs> Every of place like, reminds you yeah, of Brazil. Yeah, how? Every place. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to tell you the qualities. It's the places that are warm. So the sun, sunshine, warm. It's the places where people value family. Okay. okay. Where family is really important. Where they like have really fashion, good food. Like fashion, yeah. fashion places. I was about to make that <laughs> joke, but I, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other place would be or the other thing would be like where life is happening on the streets like people are outside like they live their life kind of outside mm. okay that to me when you start thinking about like energy what energy means it's it's really that for instance i'll give you an example i went to hawaii and hawaii has some of the best beaches in the world and i went to hanalei bay which is arguably one of the most beautiful beaches and I was like, yeah, it's beautiful, but where's the little guy selling milu? Like, where's the <laughs> where's the kioski to buy a little kaipiring or something? Like, to me, a beautiful beach is nothing without energy. 
And that's how I feel about most countries that are beautiful that have no energy. So it's it's not so much about the beauty aesthetically to me as it is about okay. the people in the place. I always say I travel for people, not places. Because, again, I've been to the best, like, visually beautiful places in the world. But if you look around and there's no one there, there's no energy, there's no music, no one's yeah, laughing. Like, like You, I don't you go to a place to stare at the view for two minutes yeah. and then there's nothing else to do you know just the the the, the wind noise you know <laughs> like, yeah yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's depressing i mean it's beautiful but and also in those places they're for different kinds of travel like if you go to truly relax and you're there with like a lover or family or whatever that you bring your party with you that's one thing but okay. for me when i'm on these like ex exploration trips or I'm learning a language I need to go to a place and I can tra I travel alone a lot so even in Crete I was alone for a lot of the time and I became friends with the you know bartenders and then we're speaking Greek and I'm like at the beach by myself watching the sunset and then I go to dinner and I'm meeting people and I'm like shit this is the best thing ever like this is how I want to live my life forever okay hmm. <laughs> I like uh, Gabrielle soon asked if you know the drama of the traveler that didn't fight Biscoito Global on Greece. No, what ha what's the drama? Do you guys know about that? I no, but, but never I, heard about it. I, like my guess is that he was searching for for a food that doesn't exist on Greece. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I mean If 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 Gabrielson tells me anything about any country, I just believe it. You know. Yeah, that that's like a, a friend of ours that that is really like his geography. He's like the. He is geography. He, he is geography. Geography you know? itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, Cloud Hamidur, our aunt, uh, say that Joanna like to change with other people, and that's that's exactly what you're talking about, right? You like to experience the place and the people in it more than anything, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, because you can go somewhere a hundred times and it's always going to be different because of who you meet. The place stays the same, but sometimes not because climate change is real. Okay. That's another scary thing. I've seen some of the, like when I first started traveling, I went to Mexico and I went to this place called Playa del Carmen. A beautiful beach town, okay? It was fucking beautiful. I go back five years later, trash. The beach, wow. trash. Hotels all over the beach. They've taken the public beach, turned it into private beaches, and you're just like, what? Oh. Like, seeing the same thing in Verón Vermelho. When we right. were kids, the beach was so far away. Like, the water was so, so far. Yes. And now, as I go back, like, uh, every few years, I see, I'm like, damn, the water's getting so close to the house. Like, you start seeing... You, Next time I go, uh, I'm, I'm going to be sleeping under the water. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Isn't that crazy? You don't notice that too, right? Like, I, not much, but a little. Because I because go there. Because you were there more often. Yeah, more often. But, but for me, like, having remembered how far it was when we were kids, of course, we were small. We had, like, smaller legs. So it would take, like, <laughs> 45 minutes to go from the house to the water just because no. it was so much <laughs> Now it's like shrinking, but it's really because the water's receding, like yes, the climate yes. is real. But that's not the point. The point is the people, every time you go to, you could go to the same place. When you meet somebody new, they change your entire experience. They will change everything. They change how you feel about the country. And so whenever somebody's like, Joe, what are your favorite places? I can never answer that based on the place. It's always about like the connections that I've made in that place. Of course, I love a good beach. I love, you know, good food and that that matters. But there are many places on earth with good food and good beaches. But when you meet people that you connect with for life, that's the place yes. you're going to fall in love. Yeah, that, that makes sense for me. That's That sounds like the most fun thing for me to do in a place. I, I think Apollo doesn't share this. This this thought. Why not? <laughs> no, I'm I'm more of of an introvert, you know. I'm not I'm not a people's person, you know. I don't But like maybe to talk. You meet other introverts, and then you could just hang yeah, out. I'm it's it's not like I don't like people at all, but it's very <laughs> hard for me to to form a connection with someone, you know. I when I when I think about traveling, I 
think about more more about the cu culture of the place and the things you can do there that you can't do here or in other places you know that's 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 what appeals to, to me the most you know and you know the good thing is like you go for the culture you go for the activities and then you will always meet people even if you're introverted yeah, yeah you i mean yeah. if i if i meet someone and i and i it's good you know but i don't go with that intention you know <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And there's some trips I've taken. I went to New Zealand by myself for New Year's in 2019, like all the way. I actually went from Brazil. It took me three days <laughs> to get to New Zealand. It was horrible. Like <gasps> I flew from Rio. My first flight from Rio to oh. Chile, I was going from Rio to Santiago, was delayed. And because that first flight was delayed, everything else was ruined. So I ended up leaving. First, I left Rio das Oysters, so I had to take the bus to Rio. Got okay. to the airport. My flight was delayed. Okay. I got to Santiago. I had to spend the night there, and it was during the revolution. So they drove us from the airport into the city, and I just see like pieces of buildings on the floor, and mm -hmm. like the military police is on the street, and I'm just like, I just want to go to New Zealand. And then, I sleep <laughs> and then I wake up, and then I take a flight from Santiago to Sydney, Australia, which is like a 15-hour flight or something crazy. Get to Sydney. The next flight was canceled again. I had to go from Sydney to Auckland, New Zealand, and then another flight from Auckland to Wellington, New Zealand. And I get there and I'm just like, oh my God, like three days, four flights in the future, because you're 23 hours ahead. And I spent the entire week basically alone. Like I made, I made one friend. But it was like very solitude, and I loved it. It was good. Okay, okay. The, 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 at least the, tr the, 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 the trip was good, right? The, the, yeah. The, the state uh, was good. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh you you were like in a, in a cab or in a, in, a, in a car, and then everything is just falling down, like the military, and then bah, 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 something like that. And it was like, I, I didn't know if I was going to... It was like war zone. It was truly like a war zone. <laughs> and everybody in the van from the you know airport to the hotel, we were all just like okay. silent, worried. You know when you could tell everybody's worried? Okay. It was that. And But even we at fine. the hotel, right? You said you saw... Hotel, yeah. you, you said you, you saw some fall, fall, falling buildings, like, like yeah, buildings you on you the saw, ground. Yeah, like, saw in the park, across the street. I was just like, holy crap, things are <laughs> happening here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Gabriel some like uh, phrase it really well. He said, "Travel is always a connection and a collection of stories. Every time I travel, I come back with a different story." Okay, that Gabriel, best... hey, I love it. <laughs> and that's like the the the, the best thing actually. Uh, if you travel and you come back and you don't have like three stories to tell, like what did you do <laughs> at your travel, right? Uh, what what did you do? You didn't do nothing if you, if you can tell a story about it. And even like, you know, it's funny. I think the worst, when the worst things happen, make it makes the best stories. Like <laughs> it's not, the other part of the whole like seven year career of travel vlogging. There were so many struggles, like the amount of times I've been to like foreign hospitals and no one ever knew. I learned Italian in the back of an ambulance in the middle of the Italian countryside. I swear to God. Like, okay. had a panic attack, allergic reaction. They called the ambulance, and they're asking me all these questions in Italian. <laughs> and suddenly, I'm like, parla italiano adesso. So, like, uh, I'm literally, like, when did you learn Italian? I'm like, right now, I'm learning Italian. <laughs> right now with you. Like, this is the crazy shit that happens. And, like, again, the, it's the worst thing in the moment. You're just like, what is yeah. happening? And then the stories that come out of it are crazy. Yeah, and then you got shot in Brazil. <laughs> and then I got shot in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got shot in Brazil. And I say it with like a huge smile on my face because I'm still alive. Yeah. You got the, yeah. the, the bullet is seen on you, right? The bullet. The still bullet's in still in me. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Uh, it, is, it is safer. Is it? <laughs> Letting it there. Yeah. I, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was crazy too because like the whole life story that I had was to avoid that like when my mom took us out of rio it was because she wanted to raise her three kids mm. in a, like okay. less dangerous place because she had all of these like, incidents reasonable when she, <laughs> reasonably more yeah it was a reasonable decision 
But yeah, she she took us out and we grew up in a very safe neighborhood, very safe town in Connecticut in the USA, two hours away from New York. Okay. And then I started traveling the world. I started making my career on YouTube. And then in 2017, I decided to go back to be Brazilian and experience Carnaval because I had never done it. Uh -huh. And for some stupid ass reason in my mind, I'm like, if I haven't lived a Carnaval, I'm not really Brazilian. So stupid. I, I think I haven't lived in a carnival. <laughs> really? I don't, I don't to, like to, it. To I, I, I've been it too, but it's not the same thing as living it. I like being there and being like, yeah. Uh, okay. It isn't the same thing yeah. as I mean, like, taking... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> carnival can be really fun if you go with the right people. I, I, right I've had places. some fun. In, yeah, you know, I've, I've had some fun in carnival and I don't like parties at all, you know. Okay. But I've had you some fun because I went. Introverted. To... What happened, Apollo? You were introverted a second ago. You, were you know, <laughs> yeah. But it was uh, a time in my life where I was less of an introvert, and I was. Ah. But but yeah, it it okay. changed. I don't Leo, want to go back. Low at the chat <laughs> said, uh, "Crazy day." <laughs> Leo, <laughs> cousin. Yeah, he he was there. He knows how it went down. Yeah, it was crazy, and what's even crazier is like. It's gonna be six years, and it goes by so fast. Uh, but yeah, six everybody's years. good. The bullets in my back, everything is fine. I was dismissed <laughs> from the hospital twelve hours later, okay. and I was like, "Damn, I just started getting comfortable." And they said, "Wait, yeah. what? What happened? Why? Why did you get shot? What? What?" Because we were driving down a street the last night of carnival, a street that like my cousins live in, like down the street from that they've driven all the time like a street i should have been raised going down and mm -hmm. just out of nowhere there were two men blocking the street with motorcycles and guns trying to rob whoever came down next we were the car and we kept driving because my uncle who was driving had already gotten shot in his life and he probably realized if we stopped they would have killed us so as we drove away, they started shooting the car, and one of the bullets that came from the back went through the back of the car, through the back seat, and into me. And we, it was insane. Like, it was like this action movie, but it was real life, you know? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> it was so crazy, and it's crazy to think that, like, again, we left Brazil to avoid this happening. I go on vacation to be <laughs> Brasileira and experience Carnaval, and I get one hell of a souvenir with a bullet in my back that is too close to my spine to be taken out surgically so the doctors took the exams they were on strike so there were no doctors when we got to the hospital we got there like 9 9 30 p.m 10 p.m uh no one else had gotten hit thank god but they were just like relax i'm like what now is not the time to relax <laughs> All night, like awake, I was just like, oh my God, am I gonna die? Like, is the bullet gonna move? Am I gonna be paralyzed? And then at 10 in the morning when the doctors came in, they saw the results of the exams of like the CAT scan, the basically tomography, I think is yeah. what it's called. Yeah. And they said, it's way too close to the nerve and your spine. So we're gonna leave it in and you have a hell of a story have a nice day you're dismissed i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> like literally what is this what is this life that i'm living it's I'm not real okay <laughs> yeah. so, but, but that, there's no danger of it being like too close of your spine and you living your life or well, so this is the thing. It's like, there's no manual about this. So what the doctor said, and then I got some uh, other opinions in the States, they said that it's in a muscle. And when your body gets hit with something like that, your your body creates a tissue around it. So it basically protects the foreign object and it becomes a part of your body. So it's almost like I got a hip replacement, you know? And then the way okay. that the doctors talk to me, they're like, if it hurts, come talk to us. Okay. But if it doesn't hurt, live your life, you know? And it hasn't hurt. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm living my life. Okay. <laughs> well, that that's like like this kind of story, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's it's like really straight crazy. out of an action movie, like for really real. <laughs> I really I, I had something to say, but I I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> 
<laughs> I really don't um, remember. But yeah, I guess like the conclusion, I was on a plane five days later. I went to the States again because I had, I was like already leaving. And then it wasn't even like I was upset that it happened. When it happened, I was just like, oh my God, that day I didn't wake up thinking I was going to get shot. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I don't think it, you, you wake up thinking it. Only like yeah, on Chile in <laughs> 2019, maybe, but. Imagine you're waking up. Mm, today I think I am going to get shot. That's it. <laughs> but this is the thing. You know, the crazy thing about life and like people, human beings, no. how we are. No, I just is... realized that my character, like, what? This. Oh. <laughs> oh Why? Really? Yeah, yeah, mine does this. No, oh I, I was try I was trying to point. I was trying to point. <laughs> you were doing this. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you violence. <laughs> 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 you, to all the criminals out there. That's, like that's I'm it. probably doing this the, the, the entire live stream. <laughs> I no, 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 haven't it's... noticed. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. me neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, your mom was really reasonable taking it out of Rio. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I yeah. didn't tell my mom I got shot for like three days because I knew she was going to try to kill me. <laughs> it was yeah, like, okay, that makes sense. You didn't die, I'm going to kill you. And she was so <laughs> mad. She was so mad. And then she was so relieved, but first she was mad. She was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is exactly what I tried to prevent our entire <laughs> lives. <laughs> And I, and I saw uh, today searching for images for the, the thumbnail. I saw like a a a G1 a G1 uma matéria like talking about a, a United States YouTuber and I I said oh, what a United States YouTuber <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like okay but and then you lived in where are you living right now? I'm in Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, so okay. Yeah, I was living in... So I, I grew up in Connecticut. I lived in Manhattan for five years. So I went to school there. Then I lived in Los Angeles for five years, which is when the channel started really taking off. But in that five-year chunk of Los Angeles, I would rent an apartment for a year. And then when the lease expired, I would travel for six months. Okay. So I'd put all my stuff in storage. And this is when I started really living abroad. Like... I would go for a month in Italy by myself, a month in Greece by myself, a month in Paris, and like, started, this is how my life was. And then for six months, we would, I would travel alone with my old business partner, and then we'd come back to LA, work for another year. Because when you're traveling so much, it's very hard to have a routine. You know, like, you eat bad, you don't work out, you don't yeah, have any friends, <laughs> you don't talk to family, and after a long time, you're just like falling apart. So the only way we found it sustainable was to do six months traveling a year home with a few trips and then six okay. months traveling. So I did that for five years and then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, I had an apartment in LA, but when the world was coming to an end, I'm like, oh damn, I got to go close to my family. And everybody still lives in Connecticut. So I came here and bought a house here thinking when I was growing up, I'm like, I'll never move back. This place is so <laughs> boring. And then here I am again. <laughs> and, so annoying, and how has but... it been living in a in, in there like uh older yeah i mean it's been it's been good and then i moved to london because i was like oh i can't live with my mom i'm 30 years old so i moved to london <laughs> for four months and then i just came back for the holidays but i'm gonna be back in london soon okay but it's good it's good i mean now with family like when you get Nieces and nephews and stuff, it just changes everything. Like, I'm now the Chichia. And okay. no amount of travel is going to replace the time with those kids that I love so much. So this is the other reason why I wanted to come home. Because it's like, well, damn, you could travel and see beautiful things. But if the people you love are somewhere else, like, what's the point? That makes sense. That makes sense. So travel as you're young, if you have money. And then... Truly, or even have money because i was broke just be strategic get people to pay for your trips work in jobs that give you travel opportunities yeah just leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe just get, get creative there 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Leo asks here in the chat, do you have any negative stories about uh, that fame caused? That like being famous caused you uh, any harm that you remember right now? I mean, definitely just the lifestyle of like, you can't really go when you're really growing and people really recognize you, yes. they approach you and they think that they know you yeah. because they've watched you. They've watched so many hours of you. But it's actually scary because people would come up to me, especially in Brazil, they'd come up to me and act like we were good friends and I didn't know who I actually knew and who I didn't. Because they, they came up with such familiarity, like, oh my God, Jo, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like, how's your family? Like, how? And I was just like, so you just feel exposed. <laughs> okay. And it's that makes sense. Because you're shit. What is this how I want to live? And part of the reason I wanted to stop doing YouTube as much was because of that. Okay. Because I felt like my career was exposing my my personal life, my personal relationships, and I didn't have any privacy and it sucks. Not having privacy is really really bad. Like even when you're filming a TV show, when you're people don't realize this, you have a microphone on you all the time. Okay. You can't even pee without people hearing you pee. So for a year what? of my life, I lived under surveillance because I was on a microphone. And you have to become really good friends with a sound engineer so you could tell them to cut off your microphone when you want to, like, have an intimate conversation or pee or whatever. Because otherwise, the entire crew will hear you. Well, no privacy. And that's like uh, because it is a reality show, right? And then well, that's, that's how when you're shooting a TV show. That's how it works. Like all of the cast has a live oh. feed of their microphones, and the producers have headphones on, like plugged in, all day long, just to hear if the cast says anything good, and then they take notes. But then when you cut the scene, the microphones stay on. So a lot of people make the mistake in in TV. It's called a hot mic. People will get in so much trouble because they talk shit about somebody on <laughs> set and it's they wow. have a hot mic. So the mic is on and then people know like, oh, like we heard you. And it's just like, <laughs> so for a year you're living self-surveillance. That, that's really sick. That, that's what, okay. I, I didn't knew that at all. At all. Yep. Okay. And then like, the the worst thing of being famous is the loss of privacy. Yeah, I I I can see that. I I have seen so many people say that that that's like okay. Yeah. And then I mean that that's why I am this. You know, you yeah. never you it's you this. there watching me. You'll never know who I really am. You will never know. Probably well, you yeah. will. Probably you will. Like we'll like. No, know. they won't. For, like in for, an Instagram post uh, that that I, that I post, probably a picture with you sometime. I, I won't be in real Hack. life in person ever. You, okay. you won't see me. Okay. In, in, if I if I do something in person, I wear a mask. Okay. <laughs> Got it. The anonymity is a, is a luxury. And then the other thing, obviously, is like we're living in the age of people trying to cancel everyone for everything. Yes. <laughs> so that's yeah. the big issue there because what happens is anybody can accuse you of something. And all of the 10 years plus of your life that you've dedicated to this career, suddenly those people are against you based on an assumption or somebody's opinion of you. And if you talk about something, if you respond, it's bad. And if you don't respond, it's bad. Yes. And all of my friends who have careers as long as mine, they've all had this experience where people have publicly attacked them and it's damaging. It's psychologically damaging. It's damaging to your career. It's damaging to your opportunities. And then you have to try to like rebuild and move on. But where like the internet is a very beautiful place, but it's also a very scary one. Yes. Because so many people think they know all of the sides of the story. And I know personally, because I've lived both sides, like I know what it is behind the scenes. 90% of what you see is not true. 90% of what people post is not true. And if it's true, it's with like a twist that you would never imagine. So I don't like the, the fact that people are so gullible in believing everything they see and everything yes. somebody says. Because yes. that it really is damaging and they hurt people. It's like bullying times a million. And so it's like on one hand, 
you can grow a beautiful audience. Like imagine you guys, you're growing your audience, you're working your asses off to do it. And then one day, 1,000 people turn against you. Yeah, probably because... this is going to happen because we have a podcast. We are going to say something at some time. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. sure of it. I, 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 I mean, we, we try to stay out of the, the hot topics as, as much as we can, but it will probably happen. <laughs> like, like people, dude, people were shitting on me because I've said that 5G is not perfect. I've yeah. said it and, and people I mean, were shitting on me. People, people were because... shitting on you <laughs> when you said that the, the, the comic from that also... It was generic. I don't. I don't it remember was, which yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that 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 the thing, uh, uh, Joe? Like the 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 Netflix series, Mutants uh, Noventa Nove, that people were accusing it to be a copy of a Brazilian comic, and then I ah. said, and then I said that okay, uh, I've read the comic and it is generic and it isn't uh, like. Like the, the the basic plot isn't as creative as you think that it, it is, and I was like in all of the the, the... yes because and the, the 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 thing that gets me the most is that you said in every sentence like I think it is very <laughs> generic in my opinion it's very yes. generic you said it a lot of times you know so it's like yeah it's just is his opinion man. That's the like really hard part and annoying part because no matter what, you can't please everybody. And you yes. just have to th have thick enough skin to know that you put more good in the world than bad. And like that we're all humans and we're all flawed. I yeah. just wish people were more empathetic and forgiving or just more, they thought more critically. But people are bored and they have nothing better to do and they'll jump on hypes because it's fun. And they like feeling a part of the tribe. And so when they see somebody canceling somebody, they think it's great to add on to the fire. And then some people won't do that. Not everybody's like that, you know, but but it is scary because we're not like think about another career where that's the case, where you work your ass off. And then suddenly one thing you say, I guess a lot of careers are like that, but on like social any media, artistic I'm, career, yeah, any, any, any career that you have a lot of exposure, you know, like, like, of, like really yeah. any, any artistic career, uh, career, even like you are, you're a painter, you're like a, a writer, something you said, something you've, you've drawn is going to mm -hmm. be, yeah, but, but it's, you. it's what I'm saying. It's a career that you became a, a singular individual that is well no, you know? Yeah. Like, so yeah, everybody like, knows you. Imagine a career where you're like a school teacher or a firefighter. Like on yeah. those careers, you being good at your job is all that matters. Yeah. When you're in a career, when you're in a career that's in a public eye, you have to be really good at what you do, but you also have to have all of the support and be liked and be and be like politically correct. Otherwise, you're it doesn't matter how good you are at your job. You, the you have two you, options. You need to be politically correct or totally politically incorrect yeah <laughs> you need to, like, yeah, you need to I was choose your side you need to I choose your yeah, side yeah. That. or you or you stay yeah completely yeah. in the right side of the things or you just go the opposite way and just talk shit and, and yeah, yeah. about everything and then nobody is going to take you serious about anything and that's that's yeah. cool that's nice <laughs> yeah yeah but it is scary it is scary and i mean like having done it for so long now i'm like damn like perfect example i'll give you an example recently i did an instagram reel that went viral and it's a clip from my podcast that's edited with like footage on top and it's basically me explaining the word saudade and i'm like one of my favorite brazilian words is saudade because okay. it's expressing the longing for something it's this profound melancholy and as a traveler i will always feel saudade because i'm always gonna miss something or someone and that's why when i'm with someone i'm enjoying that time because i know that this isn't permanent so it's a beautiful video. The concept is beautiful. And people are shitting on me because I said, Braz I said Brazilian word instead of Portuguese word. But it's annoying because I'm Brazilian. So yes, it's, I understand. People think I'm like an American gringo dumbass. Okay. <laughs> and they're sliding into my DMs like, saudade is a Portuguese word. And I'm like, yes, e eu sou brasileira e a gente fala saudade. So yes, I know we speak Portuguese, but it's describing the word. For instance, I would say like, cool is an American word. 
I'm not gonna say cool is an English word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I got it. That's like well, because like, you've learned it. Annoying. You've learned it in Brazil. You're Brazilian. You use it to talk to Brazilian people, and then okay, exactly. it's a Brazilian yeah. word. Yeah, but it is. It doesn't. I, I, it doesn't uh, stops being a Portuguese word just because it is a Brazilian word as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's like the people are. are uh, the people think. I believe the people think. That you are saying that Brazilian is the name of the language, you know? But... Exactly. You see how small the context is? Yeah. Like, I would never say I speak Brazilian because I'm not a dumbass <laughs> and I am Brazilian. But to, to describe yeah. a word and the origin of my experience with the word, okay, the word is it. Brazilian. Yes. Yes. Okay. That... How annoying is this? This is like... <laughs> <laughs> And of like, course, people are remixing the, the reel. So now like 500 plus people have used the audio. And every single time somebody uses the audio, I get shit on again. So it's like a mountain of shit. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Uh, I, I, we didn't get to this to this uh, things yet. But our shorts and, and vertical videos are getting some traction. So every time a, vi a video goes viral, something... Uh, some Uh, people find something to say that I'm dumb and 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 talking bullshit, you know. That... I mean, it it's surprising to me that it happened a lot with you. I've seen a yes. lot of people talking that you you said shit and stuff like that. I didn't see anyone saying that about me yet. So I'm like, why? Two options. <laughs> Two options. Uh, or that's because you don't talk. Or it's because you. <laughs> oh, but I mean, the thing is that uh, there are a lot of shorts that's me talking a lot. You know. Yeah. I, I know. I I, I, like, I subtitled them, but you know. The last thing that 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 happened that is happening right now is that the, a video about mobile and how I think mobile can be the future uh, of like gaming and stuff, and I say that. And this go goes viral, like 100k but, views in one but, platform, uh, 50,000 for us, it's really big. And then people said, oh, but I don't think, I think PC is going to be the future. But okay, PC can also be the future. We don't have to be one thing at the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is the thing, this is the annoying thing, but it's also a beautiful thing because you're starting a conversation, you're starting a dialogue, people yeah. are thinking, and it's annoying a lot of times, but... That's that is the industry. Like this is why it's called social media because people are gonna talk, and a lot of people feel safe to talk because they're hidden behind avatars and screen names, and they don't have any. You know, the, nobody's gonna talk shit to your face the way that they will online. Yeah, 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 exactly. And when you when you produce content, you have to get you have to have so many skills, like if you do it alone or or with a small team like you, you need to uh, get uh, good at editing videos editing images uh doing social okay. media posts uh, talking and and writing, writing scripts and filming and operating cameras and every single thing and then you say something at your video that is nice and then someone gets there and say oh but you are wrong because of this and yeah you're right but you're also wrong because i'm not wrong uh, you're right and i'm right and that's okay <laughs> we could both be right <laughs> yeah <laughs> also i'm working too damn hard right now and that's the thing people don't see until they do it they don't yes. like no one can understand how hard it is to be a content creator until they do it and And that's the that that is it. I like to focus on the craft. Like when I really focus on the craft and less about the comments, I think that's better for my mental okay. sanity. Okay, makes sense. And how is it going with this uh, new channel, like your channel? So that's funny. I wanted to. I've been filming for like two years, and I was like, oh, I really want to tell better stories. And because everything I did was self-taught, and I did everything myself. Okay. And, you know, my old business partner, he did his side. We did, we both did our together work, but like, we don't, we do the same amount of work as in, I know how to film, edit, everything. Okay. And after the Netflix show, I was kind of like not in love with making content anymore because I didn't really know what direction I wanted to take. Because when you film a TV show and you have a crew of 13 people and a vision and a big, like, it's a big production, it feels a little silly to go back to just making YouTube videos by yourself. So I started my podcast 
called Not Your Average Joe, and it's like great. Like it's more successful than I thought it would be. Okay. I love podcasting. I think it's so cool. It's way more intimate. You could dive into like deep conversations, really get to know people. You do it recorded, right? You, you I do, do it recorded, but I haven't been posting the visuals as much. Got it. Uh, but yeah, it's not live. It's not live. Yeah. And then, yeah. and I do a lot of episodes alone and a lot of episodes with guests. So it's it's mixed. So that's been a really cool project for me. And then with my YouTube channel, I basically stopped posting because I was like, eh, I want to take a break and come back with really good stories to tell. And I'm doing a master's degree in filmmaking right now. Okay. So nice. I'm learning how to make my own TV show. And that's the big project I'm working on now. So by two years from now, I'll have a TV show that I will have made. Travel show, travel docu-series. Okay. And I'll revamp my YouTube channel, but I kind of fell out of love. It's like so many years doing the same thing. You got to take a break to come back feeling excited about it. Yeah, you need to not only take a break and, and you need to do what you're doing, like changing everything, like like flipping the table and, and doing com something completely different, different right? Uh, exactly, that, yes. It is really rare people that do the same content over like seven years. It exists. There, there and are people that do it. Most people wouldn't want to do that. Yes. <laughs> it becomes so, so boring, yes. you know? It's like, yeah, I, I've done it for like an eternity, <laughs> you know? I don't want oh, to keep doing the it. Other, the other tr really challenging thing, I have friends who have done this career for 10 years, and now, so I also have a company that I founded uh, during COVID called Joe Club, and it's a journaling company. So, like, imagine a book club, but it's a, a journaling club. And now it's like we have... 400 members and it's a paid program and companies are buying the package as a wellness in initiative for their staff. So what I always wanted, even when I started making YouTube videos, I always wanted to create something that was bigger than myself because I knew I wasn't always going to have the energy or the desire to travel the world the, the way I was doing. And a lot of my friends who are still making YouTube videos, they all say the same thing. They're like, I really want to separate myself from this channel. Is to wake up and put your face on and be happy, even if you're sad, and to have to talk about brand deals that you don't really care about sometimes. <laughs> like, that is torture when you're older and you just want to focus on other things and you're, you become a victim of your own success. Because it's not like you can hire somebody to fill in for you when you're the personality. Yes. So my advice to every content creator is to try to diversify their income the way that I'm doing now where like I give speeches, I get paid to do speeches, I get paid to consult, I have my own company, and if I want to make videos and podcasts, I can. But for a long, long time, my yeah. life was fully on camera. I only got paid if I was on, and it's it's really tough to sustain that for more than 10 years. Yeah, probably. Okay, I got it. Uh, and yeah, uh, our like my goal is like the same to get this podcast and grow it and like create other like, entertainment channels with maybe other people that want to do it and in virtual reality like we are learning we are uh, getting into the mistakes we are getting to the problems and how to solve them and like two years from now we are going to be I think in the world probably the the people with the most experience in doing exactly what you do, what we do because we are yeah. the only ones doing it by now <laughs> and doing it in two languages now yes yes we're doing it in two languages and we want to like translate it and maybe in the future translate it the, the portuguese one as as well to do, to english and get to uh get people that want to host their own virtual reality podcast do it without the same problems as we faced with this month and and still facing we we have many problems yeah right yeah now. we but like it isn't easy to get here and start like uh, uh like streaming it it is it it got faster but it can get faster -er. yeah <laughs> i mean when we when we began to do this we were like uh we started the to prepare ourselves like one hour and a, and a half before so that we could have time to start and like, when, when and then we got like 30 minutes late yeah we, we usually <laughs> we usually did it late 
So yeah. So cool. No, this is the future. It's like we're all in the same room. So when when you publish this, I will be on the green screen, yeah? Yes. yes. Like you That's already wild. are in the green screen. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And you are there. Like, you you yes. you can see you can see I yourself. Can't see the green screen. Oh yeah, my yeah, because you're seeing oh, my. Cool. You are already here. Yeah, and, and in the live stream you are there. Yeah, and that's one problem, you know, because uh, you're yeah, not you seeing see yourself. Much. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. some people are narcissistic that, that this people... No, 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 I, I'm kidding. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, no, but like in the finished product, it'll be like we're all hanging out in one room. Yes, yes, yes. And it's super cool. I mean, cool. it already is. You can see on your channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, if you go to your computer and go to the live stream, you'll see that it's, <laughs> you, so you're, you're there. I'm so excited. I really love this. And this is the thing. When you do this content consistently, it's really a lot of work, but it compounds over time. Like today, like I said, today you have a thousand, but you're, it's not just the numbers. It's like how much you're learning mm -hmm. and that knowledge you can also use in other ways. Like you could consult for people who want to do this. You could train other people how to do this. Like the, the information and I'm learning this now, like I've gotten several job offers from companies asking me to go in as like a brand storyteller chief officer of like because i know how to build stuff like i know how to create okay. content strategies I, over a decade you learn so much and it becomes useful to other people who have no idea where to start so even now if i wanted to like stop living a life on the internet i could because the skills that i've learned have allowed me to get opportunities to be behind the scenes if i want to and maybe i will i don't know maybe yeah. i will i do love making content though. And it's in a lot of ways, it's like a way I've lived my life. Like part of me is sad that I stopped making travel videos because making travel videos was like having a tiny 12 minute clip of the best moments of my life. Well yeah. edited, you know, like where I could relive it. And I, that's it. why I do love it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see if I go back full, full strength or if I'm just like a behind the scenes person, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, we we don't know as well for us, but we're at the beginning of the, our journey yeah. and we're getting to know what is creating content and we're loving it. And uh, like it is really nice that you accepted coming here again, saying that, that you are here because uh, it makes me really happy and the conversation is really is, uh, going really well. And uh, like, thank you again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited to see where you guys are in a year, and it'll be We're so going much to more. dominate the world in a year, right? That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a plan. Okay, that's, that's a it. plan. It's okay. recorded now. You have the proof. It's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, no, we no, are going... it's gonna happen. Uh, uh, people can get back here when they are like uh, needing to do what I tell them to do because I'm dominating <laughs> the world. Uh, yeah, they can come here and see that I, I tell them in advance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, that, that's a warning. <laughs> the the first uh, one hundred thousand subscribers will have benefits like houses? when we dominate the yeah when we dominate <laughs> the world. So go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> subscribe. And if you're liking the content, uh, uh, subscribe. That's the only thing that I ask you for. <laughs> okay, we are at like a, a, an hour and a half, maybe, because I can't see because of the other live stream. If people want to make questions, that's the time because uh, and we need to end it in... Uh, I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to speak. I forgot. That, that, that It is really long. It is a really long time speaking on a different language. I got... Uh, tired. tired. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I am telling you, if you do this once a week, you're gonna be your English is gonna be amazing because yeah, this we is how were, my French got so good. We were doing exactly that. We were doing like it with more. I I can't we, speak anymore. I I, we, I can't. I I, we, I lost we, my capacity no. to talk we, in another we, language. Uh, relax, we were, relax, <laughs> relax. We were doing it with more frequency, but thank you. Uh, it it was becoming hard to find guests that wanted to come yes. here, so we had to to lower the frequency. Maybe now because we have a thousand subscribers. People are going to look at our channel and say, "Okay, that's a real channel," and yeah. accept it because, like, yeah, when we, hope we had so. like five hundred subscribers, people are like, "Okay, this is a a, a kid doing something." No, no, no. <laughs> 
say it's just the beginning. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gabrielson asked if you plan to work on new seasons of the next Netflix show. No, no more seasons. Unless they call me randomly, they're like, "Hey, Joe, a third season's been greenlit." But as of now, no word. Okay, no word. But you, you're not talking that you won't do it. You're just don't yeah, just saying no that you are going to. Okay. There's just like, a, who knows? but I think for me now, it's focusing on making my own show because what I learned is that I can, so I will. Okay. That that's perfect. That's perfect. And so, Joe, do you want to say anything more? Here? Just that I'm very excited to see where you guys go with this. It's super cool. I'm so excited for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Gabrielson said that two worst things of speaking in another language is the tiredness of speaking that a lot of uh, uh, lot lo loads of time and laugh on that language when you're typing yeah i don't know how to laugh when i i'm i'm like laugh. yeah, oh, yeah on text, like on text. Laugh text. oh like ha, ha 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 yes yeah but but what but we use like K -K 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 -K. english speakers yeah what english speakers do when they h a h a ha 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 it just doesn't sound like a laugh yeah like, it is it does sound like a laugh but it no, sounds like a fake laugh it sounds like a yeah. It, sound, it sounds like a forest laugh, you know. Yes. <laughs> Who says ka 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 ka? I don't know, but uh, but we look at this like I'm looking at it on the chat, and I I'm thinking about him laughing. I don't know, right? But I, I usually use emojis when I'm talking with someone in English because yeah, uh, yeah, that's easier to understand. But yeah, if you ever, it's LOL or like LMAO. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. like ha ha ha. I I usually I usually use LOL because it. It's, you know, short. I'm saying that I'm laughing. <laughs> you know, my favorite part, whenever you type in LOL, you're like this, LOL. Yeah, you're, you're not <laughs> laughing at all. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, like Augusto, he's, he's on the chat. My brother, uh, he's on the chat, guys. Oh, no. And he said, KKKKKKK uh, is, uh, is the most sincere laughing. Uh, yes who is laughing yes. uh doesn't have time to like digit uh digit uh ha 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 you just press the same yeah, button yeah. repeat you just hold the key you know you just, you just hold, hold the key on the keyboard <laughs> it is it's easier yeah exactly like, yeah, yeah. Ha, 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 ha is like yeah it's a little bit more I mean, not, like the best I mean, laugh that I, I the laugh that I, I i love to to read is the one where the people just smash their head on the keyboard you know like oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I hate this left i just hate it no, I, I can't i can't I, I don't know i find it so ugly i look at it and, uh, yeah, you're just making some weird noises <laughs> that's laughing you you just but no, 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 no 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 you don't you don't you don't laugh doing <laughs> you don't do this you don't know you're not german <laughs> yeah I, I i i actually know that you don't laugh like this oh, but i don't God. know if um. I want to know how they say laughing in all languages now. I'm going to find out. Like, I, I know that, uh, I think in Indonesian, I think, I don't remember that it's Indonesian, but there, there were a guest here on the podcast and he laughed using five, the, the, the number five, like five, 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 five. Right now I need to know. I'm going to look this up. La this that's, la that's because the, the, the number five in their language is, uh, huh? you read it like he. He, so it's like he, 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 he. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. What about, I like he, he, he. Okay, this is getting out of control, guys. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. So uh, thank you again for being here. Yeah. And thank you, everyone in the chat, uh, for being here as well and asking questions. You do the live stream uh, being a good one because I can't know all the questions. I don't write any questions going here I, I i i come here and i just don't talk i, I just don't know what to don't talk, talk. yes <laughs> no, you, I don't you just talk. Don't, I, <laughs> you just sit there and stare at me yes, okay, menacingly yeah. and thank you joe for being here <laughs> again and, and it was really fun uh i hope we can do this again sometime yes uh, <laughs> i would love to and i'll see you at christmas or after christmas yeah probably uh, at christmas i don't know home. We're going to, we're going to, ah, okay, after Christmas probably. I don't know. 
Why? Uh, oh, we need Bottom to do we yeah. did we yeah, need to do yeah, 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 yeah. standard wait wait wait, standard, wait 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 uh, we do we have, have a... we do have a, an ending we a have a... okay okay yeah 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 do it. I'll, 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 i just hit something i know what i will explain to you what it is our ending we have a tradition here i'll yes. just keep talking to you for uh whatever it takes the time you know i i don't know when i will stop talking and i sure hope it doesn't take too long because I'm talking in English right now and it's difficult. Yes. But and yeah, I'm and, and the he is going to cut me. I don't know when, but he is going to do it. And I'm just going to keep talking here.